Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship with First UMC Santa Monica. It is a joy to be in community with you on this beautiful morning. As we get started, be sure to take a moment to reach out and say hello on the comment wall and share the peace of Christ with one another in your homes and online. A special welcome to those who are joining us for the first time. We are so grateful that you're here with us. And if you would like more information about getting connected, we have a sign-in link in the description of this video. We'd love to hear from you. As we move into this time of worship and prayer, we give thanks for this day and all the ways that God is moving in our lives. As the prelude begins, let us turn our hearts and our attention to the worship of God. Please join together in the call to worship. Creator God, great is your name. All creation sings of your glory. You have exalted us and crowned us with honor. Even the infants join stars and moon in singing your praise. How great, O oh God, is your name in all the earth. We take time to celebrate our mission and common life together. 
The first UMC preschool celebrated its last day of the school year on Friday. We give thanks for our teachers who have provided a safe, caring, and nurturing environment for children and families over the past year. We also thank preschool director Dee Menzies and assistant director Dane Rold for their leadership during these unprecedented times. We are grateful for a wonderful year of fun and learning. Over the summer, Church on the Lawn has provided a meaningful way for us to connect and worship. Join us for our last gathering tonight at 5. We'll provide chairs and some awnings for shade, or you can bring your own lawn chair or a blanket. Where do we go from here is our guiding theme tonight as we consider this question in prayer and in worship. We hope to see you there. We give thanks for our prayer quilt ministry and the many hearts and hands that work faithfully through this ministry of love and support. During this time, they continue to offer prayer quilts to those in need of prayer. When we have a prayer quilt during worship, like we do today, we lift up the recipient's name during the prayer. And over the following week, anyone can call the church office to request a tie be made on the quilt for you by the church staff. You can visit the church website to find out more about this meaningful ministry. Lastly, we invite everyone to Zoom coffee hour at 11. Come say hi and spend some time in community after worship today. Let us know if you need help finding ways to participate. We are here because of you. And if you're having any technical difficulties, just call the church office during the week. Details about all of these opportunities are in the online order of worship and are also on the welcome page of our website. We thank God for these opportunities for fellowship, for worship, and for service. Thanks be to God. The Gospel this morning is from John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up, and saw a large crowd running toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not be enough bread for each of them to even get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments that are left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the sea to Comernium. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking 
on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward where they were going. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The story of the loaves and fishes is probably one of the most well-known in the Bible. It is told in slightly different versions in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which lets us know that it was known and beloved widely across the early church. It was thought to echo the Exodus story of God providing manna in the wilderness to the Israelites, and it was a story told each time communion was shared. From this, we know that the early church trusted the way this story communicates the essence of the gospel message, the core values at the heart of our faith, values about generosity, compassion, sharing, abundance, stewardship, trust, and love. All that in one seemingly simple, straightforward story about how the sharing of a little becomes enough for all. The story about Jesus becomes a parable, really. It's as if the gospel writer starts the story by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like that time when the crowds listened to Jesus for hours and hours, so long that they got really hungry. And Jesus had compassion on them and wanted to make sure that they had something to eat. And here's how it happened. The story of the loaves and fishes. Small bits of food that became enough to suffice. Sort of like that small mustard seed of faith that small scoop of yeast, those few drops of water from the baptismal font, that though seemingly small, contain all the energy and hope and power and life and trust needed to change the world. It's a parable, a simple story that illustrates a spiritual truth. You can't take it literally. As one commentator noted wisely, don't try this at your next church potluck. I mean, really, who knows what that little boy thought when his meager picnic lunch miraculously becomes food enough for that whole crowd. The commentator notes, there is enough. In fact, there is more than enough. Jesus knows this, but nobody else seems to. Why would they? They can count five loaves and two fish versus all those people. So it's just Jesus and the little boy against all the voices of common sense. Did you hear how it happened as Terry Ray read the story for us? The wording is almost exactly like the words of institution in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it and he gave it to the people. We can almost imagine him thinking to himself, may they do this to remember me. May they do this to remember the life-giving power of the creating spirit of God. May they do this to remember the essential role they each play in my ongoing story of abundant life for all. 
We are privileged to have hanging in our chapel narthex a gorgeous serigraph by the LA artist John August Swanson. It depicts in vibrant colors the familiar story of the loaves and fish. The day we dedicated it, John came to be with us and described the incredible process of layering color upon color upon color upon color to create the finished piece. In his artist notes, he wrote that the first depiction of this story that he did contains bright colors, rolling hills, and high floating clouds. The people are wearing garments with many colors and patterns, inspired by the creations of the makers of cloth, the weavers, and the dyers of Central America, Mexico, parts of Africa, and India. John shifts the emphasis from an inexplicable miracle done by God to the miracle of what happens when we share whatever we have with one another. He said, my image of loaves and fishes emphasizes and reminds us of the basic needs of all humanity. We all share the need for food and for providing for our families and communities. If we take the cosmic view, he said, that there currently exists enough of what we need to sustain the world, we urgently need to consider sharing the resources that have been entrusted to us. Contrast that to the disciple Philip, whose first response to Jesus is, in effect, to tell him that he's nuts. Are you crazy, Jesus, he seems to ask. Six months' wages would not be enough, not be enough to feed all these hungry people. For disciples who are convinced that what they do have could not possibly be enough, the possibilities are necessarily next to nothing. And that is the key to the spiritual breakthrough that Jesus is looking for. That's the heart of this parable about the kingdom. Jesus wants us to have new eyes. Jesus, the Lord of the dance, wants us to believe and to dream big. Helen Keller said, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. Do we believe that? Do we act like we believe that? Do we live like we believe that? Or are we trapped in a prison called not enough. Prisoners of our own pitiful lack of imagination, trust, and hope. For if we, like those first disciples, who have all been created in the superabundance of our extravagantly generous God, if we, disciples of Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again to give us life in abundance, if we still look at who we are and who God is and what we have, no matter how meager, and can still only say that we don't have enough, then we have not yet been saved by the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. If we remain focused on what we do not have, 
then truly we are still conformed to this world, as Paul says in Romans, and have not been transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are still not able to discern the will of God for us and for this world, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of God comes to us this day to jump off the pages of this ancient book and bring us life and life in abundance. And what a word for us now, in these days, when on so many levels, the future is unknowable. The parable of kingdom hope in this story comes to us to show us how to look at what is available and to trust that it is enough. It comes to invite us to look inside ourselves and believe that who we are and what we bring is enough. The parable of kingdom hope in this story comes to us this day to show us how to believe that the power of God is always bigger than what we see. The power of God is always enough. The power of God comes in bright colors and with exuberant joy. The power of God brings life for the world and hope for our hearts and bread for hungry people. The power of God, the ever-creating spirit of God, gives us hearts to imagine what might be. And it is always, it is always, the power of God is always more than enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. We take time to pray in community together. If you're joining us online, you may lift up your own prayers in the comment section or share them with our prayer group through the link provided. Let us be in prayer. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our neighbors, both near and far. 
Give us imaginations and hearts to trust that your creative spirit brings life for the world, bread for the hungry, and hope for our hearts. You are the sustainer of the hungry, and like a mother, you long to feed your children until each is satisfied. Turn our eyes to you, that aware of our own deepest longings, we will reach out to feed one another with the miracle of your love. God, we trust that you hear each prayer, whether spoken aloud or in our hearts. Today, we bless this prayer quilt as we join in prayer for Marilyn Leone. We pray for our neighbors and our community, and we give thanks for the life and life everlasting of K.J. Lessig. Together we pray as Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With gratitude in our hearts, we set aside time in worship for the offering of our gifts. Your generosity gives thanks to God and makes a difference in many lives. Through your gifts, our diverse community at every age level is provided a place to learn and grow in God's unconditional love and supported to live out the gospel message in our community and world. We thank you for your gifts to support the work of the church. You can mail your donation to the church or drop it off at our office any day of the week. You will find a link to our secure giving page in the description of this video. Through this act of faith, may the Spirit of God touch our hearts and lives as we give thanks through Christ Jesus. I'll lead you. 
a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still Please join together in the unison prayer of dedication. Renew us by your love, O God, that we might embrace with thanksgiving and singleness of heart all your good gifts of love. May our lips declare and our lives display genuine gratitude and unwavering confidence that your love for us will never fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now unto God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen.